My name is Dwayne McLeod and I'm glad that you're back. Today I'm going to be continuing this little series on some tailoring techniques using traditional materials, uh, namely a hair canvas. Uh, in the last little video I discussed how to make a dart in hair canvas and in today's video I'm going to show you a method of reducing the bulk in the seams, especially uh, where the facing is going to connect to the front of a garment. Um, in my case, I'm making a vest, so that's also going to apply to around the arm side and down the side of the body. So let's get started on this new technique. When we left off, uh, we had just finished uh, zigzagging the a dart closed on our vest front and uh, this side is going to face out um, this side with the muslin will face the body and this will eventually get covered with our lining and, and a facing so what is eventually going to happen here is uh, our, our fabric in my case this is a boiled wool fabric that I used to make a knockoff of a uh, Givenchy coat this winter. It, this is a boiled wool and it will get basted onto the interfacing and they will be treated as one throughout uh, the, the process. There will also be um, a facing that is, let's see, going to get sewn on here. Right, so I think you can already start to see that this is going to be an extremely bulky seam, especially when this when this facing gets flipped to the outside, and you're going to want to try to press this. And what we learned in the first episode is that this hair canvas is going to be completely resistant to any pressing. You you could trim this down as close as you can and you are still never going to be able to get this to press. So what is going to happen here is we're going to replace the edge of the hair canvas with some muslin. And this is a technique out of Edna Bishop's book, The Bishop Method of Clothing, Clothing Construction. And this is uh, in my estimation, uh, a valuable resource. I absolutely adore this book. It is very old school. There is nothing glamorous about anything going on in here. But the techniques that she gives in this book can truly take your sewing and your construction to a whole new level. And the instructions for the method that we're going to be using today are on page 152 and 153. So I'm going to grab some muslin and we're going to get started. Okay, I have my piece of muslin. This is actually a leftover muslin from a pair of trousers that uh, ended up being a total fail. And uh, one thing that I always do, I save all of my uh, old muslins they go to what I affectionately call my muslin graveyard because you never know when uh, there might be a piece uh, that you can use and in this case these failed trousers ended up to work perfectly for what we're going to try to do here today so one caveat when you're using this method is that your muslin has to be on the same grain line as your pattern and your fashion fabric. And so I've, I've torn this muslin to find the grain line. Um, and this is very easy to do. The easiest way to do this is to go ahead and just uh, pin, pin your pattern piece onto the muslin. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, and I'm going to cut this line. 
and then I'll be back and we'll do the next step. Okay, here is our muslin that has been cut. And I think that you can see that it lines up very nicely with our fashion fabric underneath uh, as it should. So in the next step, uh, we will take the muslin and cut a one and a quarter inch strip all around the outside edge. And I use my little seam gauge to do this and by just making a lot of little tick marks which I'll later connect when I when I cut it. So I will go ahead, I'll cut this strip and then we'll see how it all goes together. So here's our canvas and here's our strip and the strip has been cut to the exact same grain as the canvas. And in this next step, the strip will get pinned onto the edge of the canvas. And um, according to Edna Bishop, the, the strip should be facing the suit or should be facing out outwards. And in, in our case, um, this is the inside of the jacket. So we're going to be pinning the strip to the outside of the canvas. And in the next step, we will stitch it on at seven eighths and then again, a quarter inch away from that. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to pin this on, take it to the machine, do the two rows of stitching, and then we'll be back. Okay, here is our uh, hair canvas front. And you can see that there are two lines of stitching here. Uh, the first line is seven eighths away from the edge. And then again, a quarter of an inch away as a reinforcement. So the only thing left to do now is to just trim away the hair canvas from the strip. Um, I like to use my little uh, bandage scissors here so that there's no chance that I am going to uh, cut through and cut my muslin strip. But in the end, this, this is minimal bulk um, and will be sewn into the seam. And in effect, our interfacing is going to be basically suspended inside the garment. And this is opposed to interfacing that's just glued to the backside of our fashion fabric. And I just think this is a, a much more couture way to interface a garment, in this case, this vest, because the interfacing and the fashion fabric are not just stuck together. They're moving independently of each other that just creates a much more beautiful garment. So I hope that this little video has been helpful for you. I do hope that you'll give these techniques a try. It can really elevate the quality of the clothes that you make. And I think that you will gain so much more satisfaction and pleasure just in wearing those clothes. They feel entirely different than any garment that's made with a fusible interface. And it, it can be somewhat addictive, at least that's how I feel about it. So anyway, come back for the next installment. I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. So you might wanna just subscribe to this channel and sign up for the notifications. And I hope to see you soon. Enjoy the time that you spend in your sewing space. Happy sewing and I will chat with you later.